Keep watching to find out what's wrong with this setup. Hey guys, Tarek Merryface here, and welcome back to Merryface Aviation. I'm making this video after I saw this in one of the aircraft I've been flying during my FI course. Can you figure out what's wrong here? The hint is this thing. That's a GoPro mount, a sports camera. Anything that uses or produces electricity, such as cameras, phones, batteries, or the device you're using to watch this video, generates a magnetic field. This is a result of the electric current. On top of that, any device with speakerphones or microphones will also contain magnets in them. It's part of how they produce and detect sounds. Any magnetic field that is artificially created around the magnetic compass will result in the compass showing erroneous reading. So whoever put their GoPro on that mount rendered the compass completely useless. Whatever they were doing on that flight, I hope it wasn't navigation. They could end up on an episode of Mayday Talk. I strongly support filming personal flights. It's a fantastic debriefing tool. It's a nice way to share your flights with friends and family. And it's also really cool. However, people end up doing silly things at times when trying to capture the perfect footage. This lack of seemingly not so common common sense means that many pilots and flight instructors become vehemently opposed to filming in flight. As you may well know, if you come to this channel often, I try to film my own flights whenever possible. However, I follow certain personal rules when I'm flying. These rules are there to make sure that I get the best quality footage possible without ever affecting the safety of the aircraft or the quality of learning when that's applicable. All the big aviation YouTubers do it too. Steve from Flight Chops will have someone else handle the cameras in flight, have a safety pilot that will allow him to handle the cameras, or follow the touch and forget rule that we'll look at later on. Mr. Aviation 101 incorporates the handling of his cameras in his checklists to make sure that he only interacts with them at appropriate times. In light of seeing this GoPro stand, I decided I would share my own three basic rules for filming a flight. One, check that you can. First off, make sure you're allowed to film. If you're not flying your own aircraft, ask the instructor or the owner if you're allowed to film. Some will say no, others allow it under certain conditions. In one case, I was allowed to film as long as I didn't post the video online. I filmed the flight and used the footage for debriefing, but as I promised, I never made it public. I respected the wishes of the flight instructor I was flying with that day. It might help if you share with them your rules in order to film a flight safely when asking permission. It might put those in charge of the aircraft at ease, knowing that you are well prepared to not let the camera get in the way of safety. 2. Camera placement The camera placement has to be carefully considered. It needs to be situated in a place that does not block the view from the instruments or outside. It shouldn't be too close to any electronic equipment and should be at a safe distance from the magnetic compass. It also cannot get in the way of safely operating the flight controls and systems, nor should it be situated somewhere which could result in difficulties evacuating in the case of an emergency. 3. Touch and forget. Don't forget to prioritize. Remember that above all else, you are flying an aircraft. You cannot let the camera distract you. Set up the cameras and start recording well before you start the pre-start checklist. Get in the aircraft, place the cameras, mounts, cables, and other equipment on the seat next to you or on your lap. Set up for the flight and then set up the cameras. Have the placements pre-planned and test it so they comply with the second rule. Once you press the record button, you must forget the camera. The only times that it would be acceptable to touch the camera afterwards or in flight are if you have a safety pilot or if it falls and you need to throw it in the back. This way, it doesn't get in the way of your flight controls. In particular, the rudder pedal, where it's easy for it to get stuck under them and thus cause a serious hazard. If it does fall, do not try to remount it. Don't stop the recording or anything like that. Disconnect it if it's recording audio and put it somewhere safe. Otherwise, leave the camera alone no matter what. Batteries die, leave it. The memory card is full, leave it. The angle looks wrong and it looks like it only needs a small adjustment, leave it. You shouldn't be looking at it anyway. The camera becomes off balance. The earliest you can touch the camera again is once you have completed all shutdown procedures. The keys are removed from the ignition and you have noted down everything you needed for the flight. No sooner than that. Basically, only when you're about to get out of the aircraft. 
Those are my three rules. I believe that just following these three basic rules mean that you can shoot some awesome footage while still being a safe pilot. Tell me in the comments section below if I missed anything else. Before I wrap up this video though, I want to give a shout out to IWantToFly.org. I don't get anything from the creator George. No money or perks or anything like that. George contacted me ages ago to tell me about his website and I promised I'd talk about it in the video. IWantToFly.org is a highly professional website with a bunch of awesome news pieces. On top of that, George helps pilot wannabe who can't afford flying get scholarships and trial lessons. He does this simply to help out other people. It's the kind of spirit that is much needed in aviation and I strongly encourage it. So make sure to go check out George's website. It's www.iwanttofly.org. Link is in the description below. But that's it for now. If you like this video, please share, comment, and subscribe. I'm Tarek Merriface. I'll see you guys next time and happy flying.